you believe it? That sums it all up. Hello, I'm Alan Davis. You're listening to the Tuesday Club. This is the Arsenal podcast. And I've got Keith Dover with me this evening. How are you, Keith? I'm fine, Alan. Good. Keith has been supporting Arsenal since 1887. That is absolutely correct. And I'm a very happy gooner. Not just, of course, recent results, but this week I purchased a replica Fairs Cup trophy, which I've been hunting down for years on eBay. <laughs> and I finally find one. £35, all the way from China. <laughs> Bargain. <laughs> It's now in the living room. What size? What size? It's about. It's the size of the actual. Uh, tr- they used to give a replica trophy to the winners, right? Of the Fairs Cup, and it's this, exactly the same size. It's about six, seven and a half uh, centimeters tall, something like that. Seven and a half centimeters. Well, yeah, you know, it's, about, it's about six inches. It's inches. About, <laughs> inches. Inches. You know. Well, that's fifteen centimeters. Well, the fi- yeah, no, fifteen. Now. Is it three inches or six? No, it's six. And what about the cup? <laughs> hey! oh, sucked oh! in by his sharp <laughs> QI mind. This, this is why I can't ever go on those kind of things. And Ty Papula is here. You walked straight into that. You didn't even QI <laughs> well, mind to well, see I that one coming. Just, you know, yeah. I was going bored with... How big is yeah. it? I said, how big is yeah, it? And he was yeah, going I, on, gesturing at me with his fingers. Yeah, I know. It never works on a podcast. No, does it doesn't. <laughs> I'll say Gordon Tarbant. And, uh, oh, where was that? Wie kann ich dich assistieren? Oh, all right. Is that, you'd be learning to <laughs> no, no, no. Frank will be pleased with that, actually. It's about the only German I can remember from him teaching me is it, is it how may I assist you? It is exactly that. <laughs> just, to set, just to set the theme nice and early of the show. And uh, hello, mate. And sorry about um, that spillage earlier on. Yeah, I'm sitting there, listener, in a pool of uh, vanished carpet cleaner, which is making it quite hard to concentrate. I've got a banging pain in my sinuses already, and that's not just from Keith. <laughs> Uh, Ty threw, basically threw a glass of red wine, a massive glass. Oh, yeah. I mean, I purchased the red wine, yeah. brought it in, yeah. thinking I might have a red wine. He's grabbed it, yeah. poured himself half a pint, yeah. and then thrown it over me. Yeah. None Sorry, of this yeah. behaviour. We didn't bat an eye there, did we? No. Absolutely bog standard Dude, behaviour. That is that's can only, all over. It can only happen on radio. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, fortunately, we had a renowned journalist and arsenal expert, Amy Lawrence, with us in the corner. Hello, Amy. Hello. Amy's oh. going to come on later and have a bit of a chat. Raise but, the uh, tone. She's, back, she's been on her hands and knees cleaning the carpet for the last ten minutes. It's the only reason we get her here, really. <laughs> it's really, no, it's not it's the unexpected <laughs> contribution. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, we've done, we've gone for a little bit of an end of year feel guest, a guest, <laughs> a friend of the show, Amy, and what we've ended up with is, is, is house cleaning. It doesn't get that on radio. Five, Sil- does in she? silent, Chris's beer mats are ruined. Uh. There's one mince pie on its yeah, side. Yeah, we need, we need to carny. try. <coughs> we need to try and keep. We need to try and keep uh, Amy in the uh, manner that she's accustomed to up on the on the five lives. So, um, oh yeah. Can, oh, could, uh, no. Well, we can't. We can't match up. up. Can't keep match the tone up. up. Well, we got Keith instead of Chris. Sutton. <laughs> this morning, I was so keen. Uh, we're, we're recording this uh, the, the day after we've um, beat Manchester <laughs> Manchester City at the Emirates. And really? I, I was so keen this morning to hear anything about it on the radio. And in my head, <laughs> I imagined. That there would be, you know, follow up, but it's Tuesday. It's a Tuesday, right? They're, they're, they're talking about NHS or something on Five Live. What's this about? Do well, you know there was a massive game on last night? Apparently, it's not relevant. The rest of the country. So I drifted towards Talk Sport. Stop oh, it. Did, did you? Oh, yes. For the first over. time this year, I listened to Talk Sport, and what they were talking about was Pep Guardiola. Would he like to go to Chelsea in London? Or one of the Manchester clubs, and apparently his wife wants to live in London, right? She likes a London scene. Can't and I'm sure that, that Manchester United will say, she's very welcome to live in London. She can live wherever <laughs> she likes. We don't give a toss where she lives. But that's what she wants. So then they started going through the pros and cons of Manchester and Liverpool. They tried to say that the restaurants were of an equal level. <laughs> Was this, did this actually happen <laughs> yes, this morning? Yes, exactly happened. And then they went for the relative merits of Coronation Street and EastEnders. And then I just switched it off. What a bag of shite that station is. <laughs> Absolute garbage. Did you get? Did you hear anything about our Nothing. Game? <laughs> then they had. Is it Brian Moore, the rugby player? Well, he doesn't know Brian anything Moore, about football player. at all. Alan Brazil, who's always hung over, isn't he? I mean, the worst <laughs> state the pair of them were. They couldn't agree what year Chelsea played Leeds in the cup final. That's annoying. <laughs> Garbage. So I've been disappointed all day, and then I was, I was listening to a bit of Five Live on the way in, and they they were going on about Özil, and that uh, Andy Dunn was on saying that, well, do we? What, was it really an assist for Walcott? Was it really? Wasn't he meaning to pass to what? He was basically trying to run down his assists, like trying to chalk some of them off. But he's still about fifteen ahead of everyone else. 
He uh, is on fifteen. <clears throat> there, there was a there's a, there's a guy who plays. There's a, there's a special agent, a fifth columnist, if you will, who plays for Chelsea, who was on fifteen this point last season. Yeah. Um, but then he only got another three afterwards. I'm going to the expert. He's looking at I, I mean, but, yeah. I mean, the Trying to remember uh, the facts. But yeah, he was on 15. I think Delefeo is on seven, and that's the sec- that's who's in second. Which was your favourite moment? Last night's game. I tell him my favourite moment on. was the bit, as we've normally done, I've done it, you've done it, we do it sometimes, and then he went, Walcott, he's no Sanchez, he never does anything special. <laughs> <laughs> About 30 seconds before he scored. Yeah. He's not used to playing out there. Yeah. He's no Sanchez, is he? Because yeah. Sanchez will come, he'll turn, he'll beat someone, he'll make something out of him. But Theo can't. He doesn't ever come inside. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Sweet! Look at that! I could say he's going to die laughing. <laughs> I can say with it. <laughs> it's happened time and time yeah. again. If I start slagging someone off, they score. With the degree of uh, magnanimity, magnanimity that you can have nice, after nice you. Try, well done. Uh, what, what, <laughs> that you can have after, after you've lost. You've lost five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think he is. Amy, I'm moved to pile with you. <laughs> Amy's going to clean it up. Look at her. She's got a J cloth in her hand already. <laughs> After um after uh, after three points, I think I can actually say that my favourite moment was probably that goal that Yaya taught. Yaya's goal. Holy moly! We were looking right down it. Mm. It's a beauty. It's amazing. Absolute beauty. I don't know how he made the ball go there. Did nothing else. He might have slightly shinned it. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Ramsey basically run himself into the ground, didn't he? In the last 15 minutes, Yaya started to get on the ball. Just woke up. He had quite a lot of his touches in the game were in that period or something. There's always some heat map or touch yeah. touch map going yeah. around these days, isn't there? That shows it, shows, it. it shows Yaya asleep in the centre yeah. circle <laughs> until 70 minutes. <laughs> very, very hot in the first <laughs> 70 minutes because he was asleep like a cat. And the 76 minutes. And then, and he looks annoyed. Giroud came yeah. and dispossessed him a couple of times and he had the ump. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. You're trying too hard. Yeah. Boring. Yeah. Running about, yeah. <laughs> it was only when um, it was only when Ramsey got knackered that because if, if you look on the highlights and um, Ramsey, Ramsey was sort of trying good. back, Ramsey was absolutely but fantastic. Lovely little, t- lovely little turn in the second half, just inside half. He was absolutely fantastic. I mean, they were all good, but he was absolutely fantastic. Ramsey. Joel Campbell, I think he had a big part. Yeah, stay, of on Ramsey. Stay, oh, on stay on Ramsey. Stay on Ramsey. Stay on Ramsey. I mean, this is the, this is what's that. happened when you lose your central midfield. Yeah. Yeah. And you bring in the, the best up. central midfielder in the country's mm-hmm. turned up now. I mean, it, we, the the Cazorla Coquelin axis it was doing well, mm-hmm. but there's always a slight feeling that really we're going to win the league with this. <laughs> but now this guy's amazing, and he wants it badly. He wants to be in the team for a start, and I'm winning anything. Mm-hmm. And he was dragging us all over the pitch. And it started off quite brightly, and then they started Fernandinho and Toure, and they started to pass it, and they got good possession. You thought. Mm-hmm. Actually, they're good, aren't they? They're quite good. But then we seem to be out of change gear. OK, it's going to be that sort of a game. We'll play it that way then. We won't let one in. Yeah. This team now will not lose 6-0 to anyone. You know, this team, those days seem to me to have gone. There's a realisation when the other team's got the, got the upper hand that you can funnel back and play that period of the game out and wait for your chances. And that's what they did. I think a lot of the stuff with Ramsey, a lot of the stuff that, he's do, um, that we're enjoying so much is the same kind of thing that used to annoy so many people <clears throat> around us. You know, I mean... Every time he he still goes for passes and he still makes mistakes. You know, you know the free kick he gave away when he just had a sort of brain freeze and near the end. He's not going for but that real Hollywood Johan Cruyff stuff, really. Not so much anymore, but he still goes for stuff. And it's because he never he never apologizes. He never, you know, not so. I'm saying he shouldn't. He never he never lets his head go down when he makes some kind this is of. This a bloke who pushed Fabregas kick. aside to take a free kick when he was 18. This is he's confident. Mm. And we, we had to go a little bit of a moan about him in the pub afterwards because he missed two chances. But he's in there for the chances. He's in there for those one-on-ones that Cazorla and Coquelin would never be there for those. And one of them, Joe Hart, saved it with his face. And they're good saves from Joe Hart, mm. you know. And he's a bit unlucky. There's a brilliant little moment with Campbell. He is clever around the box with those little assists. And he was slightly behind him, so he dragged it in and towed it. I hit Joe Hart in the face. And the other one, he tried to lift it, didn't he? And I just sort of smash it, just smash it in off the bar. Well, well the good thing is, I mean, look, as you say, he doesn't hide. He's not. He's like in a, there, yeah, though, isn't he's he? He's in there all the time. He's not like Clem. You know, he would set himself up and you go, why don't you take a shot, mate? You never do. He'd pass it. Didn't pass want to it. score. Didn't want to score. And whereas this guy, the least rounds, you go, OK, I've missed a couple, but I'm going to go for the third and fourth attempt. And he will get, a, get you a goal. I don't know how he recovers from all that sprinting. Can you even yeah. imagine doing all that running? Can no. you even think about it? <laughs> <laughs> he's unbelievable the bloke and he did he he kept us there Flamini was doing a lot of work too but he kept us there Flamini had a Flamini had a decent I mean the two of them worked a lot better together yesterday I mean, maybe you know that's the, the magnitude of the game or whatever but um, Ramsey was there was a bit of discipline about the two of them 
and they were quite close to each other, which hasn't so really hard. been the case for the case that, Bang on, Joel Campbell ran himself yeah. into the ground. Well, as I say, he made the second goal, in my opinion, because he dug that ball out. Why he, was he Fabian Delph on the left wing? <laughs> <laughs> what selection is that? Is that, that a three-man midfield? I mean, if you've got Delph and Fernandinho with two in front, well, Sky maybe. Put Sky on their graphic at the start when, uh, when I got home. And watch the whole thing again. Yeah, um, Sky had him. Sky had him on the left, uh, left <coughs> of the front three, which is um, which is which is slightly. He odd. didn't know what to do in the position. He can't turn quickly. He hasn't got pace. I mean, Bellerin was oh, Bellerin, the fullback. Oh, Bellerin's back. Bellerin's back. Kishelny is. To, what's he turned into suddenly? Beckenbauer. Is he doing well, thirty yard well, runs, bringing the, the ball midfield? out of defence. And he, didn't he pass it? Didn't he? Didn't he <coughs> set up the second? Wasn't it from? Was it the first or second that he plays like a ball from inside our? Well, the second was an assist from Mangala. Right, it? that's when no, the first one is where. Uh, um, oh, sorry, Ozil, a, a pre-assist assist. A pre-assist. Mm. Özil turns um, without breaking stride, does a nice little pirouette, and uh, feeds it to somewhere where Giroud. Giroud doesn't have to do anything. I know. He doesn't have to do anything. I love that break stride. That whole thing. Received mm. it, turned, looked. And played, he thought the only and my only option to make a goal here is to put it there for Giroud to the shoot. The speed he did is like ninety nine percent of footballers will take another touch and and look to either open it up or drive on themselves, and it takes something to just he got rid of it so quickly. But he does it. It doesn't even seem to have kicked the ball. It's like he's brushed it with a feather or something. <laughs> yeah. He just stroked it. He does no effort in it. Mm. And he just sort of strokes it onto the exact blade of grass that makes Giroud's mind up for him. What you need to be doing it, but it's just the only player that reminds me of his Burkamp. It's the only player I've ever seen who can do it. Who just strokes it into your path so you're left with no choice but to slam it in the goal. And it's one thing doing it's one thing Burkham doing it with someone as fleet footed and amazing as Thierry. It's another thing putting it to make Giroud just yeah. gl- look like a gazelle running onto the ball. Giroud and Ottomendi was a good fight. Giroud had a great game yesterday. Giroud liked yeah, Giroud that fight, didn't he? Once he liked that because Otamendi thinks he's quite hard, I think. And then he found out, actually, his Premier League a bit G- different. Giroud, <laughs> Giroud even got up quite quickly. But no, I don't know why I noticed it morning yesterday, but more than usual, sorry. But um, Giroud gets a thumping and he got he got a right battering. Every time he's holding the ball up like that, he gets a right kick. Oh, you watch them. A couple of centre-halves. If you watch him while the ball's in the air, like, don't watch the ball, don't watch the... Don't watch check, you know, it's like, it's, I like watching everything that Czech does. So when he's taking a kick, I'll just watch That's Czech. my second favourite. I'm not really yesterday. just looking, not really looking at where he's kicking it to me and looking at the way you look at him, commanding the area. I wonder where he's going to put this. Meanwhile, while that's going on, Giroud's already in a wrestling match with two massive blokes holding one hand each. He's, he's fantastic up there for us. Oh, yeah. I mean, and he fights for the ball. And in, when our back's against the wall, he's in there in the defence. Much more Stapleton out. than Smith, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Much more yeah. that kind of mm. backing into someone and using strength and being broad. But the way he took the goal, he took it really well. I know uh, Ozil put it on a plate for him, but he still has a bit of work to do. Hard and low round to keep his feet, Ian Wright. Yeah. Hard and low, mm. smashed it through his legs he couldn't react if you had a if fire he could have got his face down there he'd have been right. Yeah. If, if there's a fire if you have a fire this Christmas then you can imagine like this sort of pet check what just kind of, if, there's a, if there's a fire if I have a fire in my house is that what you're saying fire, fire in your are house the kids, or are the kids there if your cat's stuck up a tree are we asleep what sort of, what is, why are you putting the fear of God into me I'm just <laughs> try to relax just have just think of pet check will keep you safe will he <laughs> Better check or keep you safe. <laughs> Meza Urza will appear at the window. It's the way that the um, of a ladder. It's the way that. Um, May I assist you? My <laughs> second, my second favorite moment yesterday was the way that just check may I mean, they might have been easy saves anyway but check looks so he makes it look them. easy he's just yeah. oh, already. Right, the Aguero this, flick yeah. on and he's just there were two of those hands up like that free kicks into position. the near post that Aguero darts in and gets gets a flick on it and check already can tell where it's going to be he can see Aguero Aguero's going he can see the flight of the ball it's going to come off him and go here and then it goes straight into his chest He's seen it all. He reads the flight of the ball. He's like an outfielder in baseball, you know. They, you know, they're on the move before the ball's been hit. He can see it. It's like an Urzil in goal, like the world's slowing down. He no knows one knows. This already. is a great thing I like about Czech. No one knows if he's got great reflexes or not, because he never needs them. Because <laughs> yeah. he's already there. Yeah. He might have amazing reflexes. You know, those flashy <laughs> goalkeepers are always some like De Gea, yeah. unbelievable reflexes, right? When, in ten years, De Gea will just be there already. But he just says, he <laughs> tends to just sort of stroll over and collect the ball. He's not even running or a jump. He's just oh, I'll just. But I'll tell you what, if he spots something he doesn't like, you can hear him from where we yes, sit. Yes, yes. Oh, he sparks like since, a lion. Since the last podcast, have we kept a tally of how many points he saved us now? What are we up to? Mm. Well, between him know. and Ozil, we're him saving at one end and Ozil making them at the other end. You feel it's like, feel like a two-man team. Well, him making... Um, oh, and a special word for um, for Mertesacker, um, who 
we keep on hearing about how slow he is and so on, but whether it's having Czech there, whether it's having Koscielny in the form of his life, he's playing brilliantly at the moment. And that chance... Well, we did laugh last night about how many headers he won. And we're going, <laughs> he's won another header. And then we look, it was Silver and Aguero. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they kicking it in the air? Yeah. But he did so well with that De Bruyne chance. Even watching it back, we thought so at the time. When you go home and watch it again, he closes the angle down and he kind of cuts silver yes, out silver yes. out I'll give it. him some credit although when Aguero flicked it to De Bruyne it was because Shelny was out of place I did wonder why Mertesacker was quite so far deep he it was, was already 30 because Shelny had kind of dived in but he sort of lopes back like the NES. him and Czech were playing backgammon or something on the edge of the box he was miles out of, where was it and then he just went he stood fa- in the, what was an approximation of the right place in the two on one and he forced and hoped the bloke makes a mistake he forced he the miss do you know what was interesting though, last night you know it was at two one and there's Wenger actually on his feet and he's shouting at him and he's waving his arms and he was like keep it down the other end keep it and then they gave the ball and he just threw his arms up and he turned around and go, oh for crying out loud yeah but that was funny though wasn't it? that <laughs> it was, was funny because up to that point him and Pellegrini were in some sort of a casual off going yeah. around the technical <laughs> area. Oh, yeah, I'm not faced. I'm not faced. You know, yeah. 900 pound suits <laughs> with their hands in their pockets, <laughs> yeah. trying to look like the two most indifferent men in London. <laughs> Obviously, the heart's pounding and one kicking every ball, but trying to outdo one another for a relaxed yeah. scene, it all before cool. Mm. And then, as soon as that goal went in from Yaya, Wenger nearly had an <laughs> arm. <laughs> but it was Steve Bowles was up with the fourth of the yes, yeah, There were a lot of Manchester City fouls, they were out on us about 3-1 and they were doing it when on a transition when we were trying to break and that seemed that was their principal tactic we're going to be well Silva was on number uh, David Silva was on David Silva was on number 4 and by the time fell, he got well booked. what about Ferdinandinho must have fouled about he starts, he starts on number 4 he's, I mean, he's, he's got, got this special technique the of the elbow in the eye that's his favourite little <laughs> moment little glancing blow to your cornea but there, there was a lot of those free kicks I well, found a little bit grubby. But it was a massive game to win, and uh, it's a great feeling. I mean, uh, coming on the back of the other big game, the Olympiacos. Uh, oh, yeah. That was nice. That was good too, wasn't it? That was nice. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. And we got some, I don't know, Spanish team in the next round. I've never heard of them. That doesn't matter, does it? Does it matter how it happens? No. Nah. Stay out. So, yeah. <laughs> Day out for them. Come to London. Get did spanked. You, did you? Um, I know you like a browser to Facebook page, Keith. Did you um, see the uh, Nicholas? Uh, <laughs> no, Nicholas I have not watched that there? ever again. You Thank haven't, you. You, you, no. haven't you. No, I want to see us winning. I don't want to see Nicholas Bentner's great misses. You know, we off. went to the new camp with Sylvester, with Campbell on the bench, with Bentner up front, with um, De Nielsen in the midfield. What a time to be alive! Oh. <laughs> what, what Fair a time. play to him for qualifying, eh? Fair play to that lot for qualifying. Yeah, that's an achievement. Getting in that game mm. in the first place. But no, I, I like Pellegrini. I, I hope, I mean, he's a, I do as well because they've lost five games already this season. I love him. Mm. He can't motivate a winning team, can he? They're drifting. Who's like, City's next game? There's that's no intensity about what they're doing. They're great on a the ball. They're great footballers. They came off the bench. They brought £100 million of talent. They brought Bonnie. They brought Sterling. They brought Navas. Well, he's off the bench. £100, 100 million. million pounds. Navas isn't talent. They caused a lot of trouble when they came no, on, isn't it? Then you get have all this talent, all, spent all this money, same at, at Chelsea, and yet you get a few players there. They throw a Moody, and it doesn't gel, and it can all go pear shaped. There's not relationships in the team. Yeah. There's not partnerships. It's not like what Wenger's tried to cultivate that we have. Are relationships between people, particularly between uh, Saka and Koscielny, which mm. is so they're so much stronger together than their two new centre backs. They mm. paid a fortune for. Another word for um from Monreal, who's he was fantastic again. It meant time. more to yeah. us. It felt to me mm. it meant more to us to win than it did to them to lose. Do you know what I mean? They, we, we were more keen about getting the result than they were. That's what it felt like. Even though they had a lot of the ball, I just felt we our players cared more than their players. That would worry me if I was a City fan. A lot of that comes from from Yaya Doré strolling around. I mean, he can do anything with a football. And he just chooses... He, his, his race is running the Premier League, as far as he's concerned. It seems to be, anyway, until he sort of switches it on at but the last minute. But didn't he get a selection that kind of That pervades his way through the team. He's, got, he's thrown Aguero in. He hasn't played for a month. But you would he's do, obviously you? off. Yeah, maybe you would. But Bonnie's form has been good. A lot of assists, a lot of goals. Much more of a fulcrum. He's got Sterling and De Bruyne on either side of him. It feels more balanced. It was nonsensical to put Delph on the left. We threw Aguero in, gave him an hour, but he just wasn't at it. Played into our hands. I mean, really. that's a little bit of European caution from you know sort of putting someone like Delph in, thinking that he's going to you know stiffen up the midfield as well, and instead of being as useless as he was. Um, and Bonnie never looks that. Bonnie doesn't seem that confident as soon as you know. 
he, he doesn't, I don't, since he's been there, I know he scored a couple of goals and, and he should do with them, people around him, but he just doesn't seem to me that he thinks he should be there and that he thinks he's in the calibre, in the same class as the people that he's playing alongside. I don't know, I don't, I really want him to do well. Um, I don't. What? <laughs> <laughs> I like him. I like him at Swansea, but um, oh, but um, but yeah, he, um, he when he came on, then he came on as a sub, and he came on late in the game, and it was a bit of a struggle for him. But De Bruyne looked really well. He should do for fifty six. I million, think but I if they De don't get well. you on the run and get you on the back foot, they don't. They're not quite sure how to break you down. It feels to me like they they they're used to getting people team, and they're something they score a few on goals. The, on the turn. They? But if they can't, if it doesn't happen for them, they mm. seem to fade and drift a bit, and then they make mistakes at the back. They just make mistakes. They're not solid. Otamendi and Mangala. This is all very just... good news for us, you know, because they yeah. are our main rivals. Yeah. Apart from Leicester, twelve to one to win the league. They're twelve to one. They're top at Christmas. What's that all about? The bookies really are convinced they're not going to win the league, and they're really trying to make people bet on them. <laughs> We're evens, by the way, in City are fifteen to eight. Well, they're, they're twelve to one to win the league, top at Christmas. It's this one though for us, though, isn't it? It's got, I mean, it's this one. We keep, we've been saying it. My taxi driver last night, he goes to me, you've got to go, innit? If he doesn't win it this year, got to go, innit? Here they come. <laughs> That's unbelievable, isn't it? Is he a gooner, though, or is he a spud, you know, no, undercover? He's a Arsenal fan. Really? Been to the game. Really? Yeah. Urs was a bottler. He's a bottler. Oh no! He's got to do more for me. Line him up next to David Moyes. I mean, the ground's full of them. We do seem to have a few of these. I was talking a few. There's thousands of them, mate. (laughs) But he's always 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 been been there. Don't rate Henri. Don't rate him. (laughs) Here is. Don't rate him. Urs, bottler. And what are they looking for? Eleven Tyson Furies or something. (laughs) Well, what do you mean by a bottler? We don't want him to go and break his leg in some meaningless 50-50 ball, do we, you know? What sort of bottle is it to get on the ball and try to play the way he does yeah, in the Premier League? Yeah, knowing that someone's going to come and thump you. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that is, I know it's a cliche, but that's the real courage, isn't it? When you get on the ball and try and play, rather than just move it on and hide, mm. or kick someone and get a yellow card and try and look hard. Bottler, nah. ridiculous. Which is what... Um, we said it when Campbell first turned up, and look at him now, fair play to him as well, because he was looking to get rid of the ball Immediately, he was frightened. Home. Yeah, when he first came in the team in the league, he was frightened. But he's he's done a couple of good things, mm. and he's got scored two goals. And confidence is everything. Look, like yeah. Giroud at the moment. Mm. Giroud now, look at him. He's like a world beater. He, he misses a couple of chances, and he'll not sobbing again. But he's there at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> and you can almost see him visibly grow in stature when the crowd are singing mm. his name. And the confidence has been a slow, long build for him. Mm. But him and Koscielny, you know, Wenger found him in the French League and brought them here and no one was quite sure. Koscielny used to give away a lot of penalties, do you remember? He was yeah. always on, his, on the deck in the box, giving you the willies. He hasn't gone to ground all season. And Giroud doesn't miss any chances. No. He had one dodgy one at St James's Park when he tried to chip Tim Krull when it was only 1-0. That was annoying. <laughs> but all season, that's the only time I've been annoyed with him. Right? That Olympiacos <laughs> header was fantastic. Yeah, it was a great header. Oh, very brave, yeah. It was a great header. And the goal he got, the little assist from Campbell... Anyway, I think at this point, I, I must stress that Amy Lawrence is going to dish some serious dirt, but she's going to do it in sign, and we will interpret that as best we can, <laughs> so as not to give away any real sources. So she'll be doing the old deaf sign language, and we'll interpret that as, you know... Well, no, she's going to come and talk. Isn't she? Well, she, yeah, she'll do a bit of talking, but I mean for the dishy, you know, gossip, you know, the, oh, yeah. you know, the dirt, the filth. Well, now, the... now you set something up here, now we're going to pay this off. No, we're not going to do it at all, are we? <laughs> <laughs> not going to do it for real, Al. How many is, how, how many is you have got the season? Is it 15? I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know what appearances are anymore, because they, they count all the sub-appearances as appearances, don't they, these days? Didn't used to be. We've played 17 games this season and he's got 50, 17 in, no, I don't know how he's got in the league, 12 in the league? Probably from about 14 chances, that's mm. what's good about it. Booing of Sagna, that was wrong, wasn't it? Well, well if, if he heard you, if he, if he heard you call him Sagna, then he yeah. probably oh, would have booed You, you know I'm never going to get these right, anyway, well, you know, He Sanya's. played for us for quite a while, well, Keith. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the booing of Sagna, that doesn't make any sense. It's yeah. like booing Galcliche, it's like, what's, what's, what's the point? Yeah, it's coming from Silent Chris's end, I must stress. Oh, yeah. Well, it wasn't, wasn't Chris because he was being very silent about it. Yeah. Yeah, really, but, really, do we but, know that for sure? But they've got they've got a Sanya without any hair, and, and there's the one time he played for us. I can't remember who it was against. So I, I don't know. Well, was. with the bead thing, yeah. The, the it's the one time he didn't have his uh, his his plaits in, and um, he, he played a, badly. He had a stinker. Keith. Ooh, yeah, yeah. she's saying a Samson thing. Don't he you? looked bog average. Yeah, he did. Which he is really not, did. Well, he's thirty three now, though, isn't he? He left us at thirty one. They gave him a big contract, didn't they? <laughs> but he walked out on us. 
Walked out on the Arsenal. Is that so, how you feel? So, oh, what do you, 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 you along the line from me applauding and cheering him. What were you doing? We're playing Man City. Well, shut up. I thought he was just, just you know, up. yeah, but we've got Hector now. I mean, if he hadn't have left, you know, it's. Yeah, yeah, so I what? just thought he moved on. In a people very... have the ump when people walk out on you. You offered him a contract play for Arsenal. Now, people have the ump. You've got to understand that. Mm. There's no point going, what are you booing people? What are you booing him for? <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> Because <laughs> he plays for Man City, City and he walked out for the money. money. So okay. this is what happens. This is what happens. He hasn't gone oh. running 90 yards and slid on his knees in front of everyone. You know, That's true. He's got a class and dignity. <laughs> and he's, you know, he's a better character. He's you a just, decent human, I think. You just see but Frank, in the end, he walks out and he asks all for you money. You just see so, Frank Stapleton and anyone who leaves the club. So what are we going up there for? <laughs> who are we going up there for? The Zabaleta's there right back. You're not even going to mm. play. You're going to go into decline. That's what's going to happen to you. <laughs> you're going to go into decline and you're going to have money. But we were giving, we were offering you a lot. Yeah. I mean, we were offering a serious amount of money. I'm not quite sure how much it was, but it was about £4 million a year or something. I mean, decent wage. Mm. Not enough. Do want to pay for Arsenal? Well. Well, hopefully he's regretting it. Yeah. I should imagine. But I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we lost 6-3 up there. It wasn't that long ago that mm. they bought our players. We haven't beaten them for five, you know, five, well, I mean, we haven't finished above them for five mm. years in a row. I mean, they have been dwarfing us in the Premier League and we've been a feeder club to them. So it's a serious turning point now that we've now played three Premier League games in a row against them without losing, that we seem to know how to play them, that they were getting frustrated and they were getting around the referee. Mm. And, and I felt like this is a good sign for us because the other clubs aren't doing it. Chelsea's hilarious. <laughs> have we, oh, <laughs> did, did, did something happen with them this week? Yeah, they, well, the manager's gone. Oh, yeah. really? Oh. Jose Mourinho, yeah, they oh. fired him. <laughs> <laughs> But, special one special. specialist in failure <laughs> evens for the title he's, he seems such a level headed guy yeah, you know? yeah. Specialist. boss boss my cover's blown massive see you next Sesk. Tuesday Sesk stay a little bit longer do you make, think make, yeah, they were, no, they, they were booing Sesk at uh, Chelsea they're, but, booing, they're booing Sesk they're Marino booing says it wasn't Sesk they're booing Azard. someone spelled Azard with two Z's have you seen that you've that'd seen probably that be me <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's Sesk, it's uh, Azard, and it's Costa, I think. And I, um, someone who was there told me that Costa doesn't want to be there. That's what scored. I've heard. He doesn't want to be there. He tried to leave last summer. Doesn't want to be there. Azard, I don't know what's going on. Obviously, obviously he hated Mourinho, and he got on better with the doctor. The doctor ran on to him, and then Mourinho fired her. <laughs> He hasn't scored a goal all season. What I'm hoping is he doesn't suddenly erupt into form and, uh, and they come I, surging up the table. That I can imagine annoying. like Mata talking to Hazard going, yeah, I know, mate. I know. Yeah. And now Hazard's going to him, yeah, but you might end up with him again. So, uh, yeah, what are the chances? Manchester nah. United. Oh, he's gagging for him, Mourinho. He's, happy. He'd be, he'd be basically camping oh, he's outside the ground. The job, oh, yeah. he can't wait. Do United really want He's toxic. He's toxic. What are you going to get? A season and a half? He's a, I know, I, How's it going for United at the moment? What? How are they getting on? How did Norwich do the weekend? They don't hate each mm. other, though, do they? You they mean don't attract hate their boys. They, they thought they were too good for Mourinho two years <clears> ago, <throat> and now, honestly, they would follow him around pleading. Well, at least he knows how to organise a side. And you say, oh, it's only for two seasons. It would be better than the last two seasons, wouldn't it? No, they would love to have him. And Liverpool, we say, had him as well now, because Jurgen Klopp's gone mental. <laughs> 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 what are you doing in front of the cop? Holding hands with all the players. Oh, look at us. After a two we all get on really Tony well. Pulis. Some of you, hold hands. It's like having a load of four-year-olds. Hold hands nicely, James. Hold hands with Lucas. I know, they were looking at hold each other. Hold hands. It was embarrassing. And we're it? walking now to the legendary, world-famous Cop End, where they've seen the greatest football teams that Britain has ever produced, legendary players, epic nights, to celebrate a last-minute equaliser against the Mammoth Football Force. That is West Bromwich Albion managed by Tony Pulis. And can you imagine the cop? Can you imagine? Oh, God, I wish I'd love to have been there in a massive disguise, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a curly wig and a tash. Do you know what? They just smelt your fear, mate. I'd to be honest. To, <laughs> just to hear them. Yeah. Just to hear the, the ironic applause. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks, Jurgen. Brilliant, mate. Great point. Great. <laughs> oh, can you imagine that? It's 2 2 against West Brom. This is humiliating. This is humiliating humiliating and they've just gone down at Newcastle oh. who by the way are shit right <laughs> and then Watford <laughs> Watford I mean really it is hilarious it is a joy it's the happiest thing it's even better than beating Man City it's watching <laughs> <laughs> I, I had some scouts sent me a tweet going you're going out against Barcelona Luis Suarez is going to score a hat -trick. he doesn't play for you anymore he walks out on you because you're shit <laughs> <laughs> 
So I said, to her, normally I don't buy it, but I said, oh, I'm surprised you found the time to tweet me. You must still be celebrating your point against West Brom, aren't you? What's he holding hands with them all for? <laughs> Go back to Germany, mate. <laughs> Piers Morgan, where are you now? He wanted him at Arsenal. Yeah, he certainly Maybe he'll turn it round. Maybe he'll turn it round. Yeah. Because, it around. you know, they're always likely to spend another £250 million on a whole new squad, which has got a bed together and try and get immediate results And end for. up with a new James Milner. And it's not as easy as it looks, this Premier League. It's not as easy as it looks. And suddenly, you know, I know there's still an arson out brigade at the Arsenal. It's a sizable one. But suddenly we, do, we look like the only ship that isn't sinking in the whole sea at the moment. Well, you know, he's, he's got some money spent on quality players. And I know uh, you, if we can get the sick back, you know. I know, what you want. I, know I know what you want, Keith. But do you want, um, do you want another forward in January, Al? Yeah, I would love another forward in January. Mm. We are light up mm. front. I and mean, if Giroud gets injured, we're in big trouble. I say if, when. Mm. Because everyone gets injured eventually, don't they? So I'd love another fall. I'm not seeing Welbeck in this calendar. No, in no. This I'd, year, I'd love it if we signed Jamie Vardy. I know you don't like him, but I would. But obviously, they won't sell him. Mm. But I mean, that's what. If we did, I would definitely think we'd move from evens to odds on because there's so many goals in him this season. But you know, I don't know. You could buy. It's the same conversation we've been having for about three years, and we ended up with Danny Welbeck and Theo Walcott and Giroud. We moved Podolski on because he was hopeless and. This is where we are, but I feel like we still. I still feel like we're one light there, and we're still light in centre mid. Actually, mm. I, I don't know. Maybe, never, maybe we'll have enough. We'll never buy a centre mid. Not with the. Not with them. Um, we've got internal solutions coming back from injury. He's always a big player for us. <laughs> well, have we, though? How long is it going to be? I mean, I know most of the medical staff were at Stonehenge last night for the solstice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So obviously they might have a bearing on when Welbeck or any of the others will be back. Maybe, you know, a cow is slaughtered, so who knows, you know. <laughs> I mean, we should ask Amy about it. She must have been behind the scenes. Was, was Amy's it? not on mic, Keith. She's oh, not. No. She's sitting, she's waiting for her moment. Oh, when are we going to give her a moment? We've been rapping no, on for ages. Minute. She doesn't know. particularly want to talk. She's only kind of <laughs> hang out and have some wine and then Ty spilled it all over the table. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was that, yeah. <clears throat> Come on, let's get Amy on the mic. Who's going to give way? I'll give way. Just like being on the tube. Go on and get out. (laughs) Amy Lawrence is in the room. Amy Lawrence is here. Amy Lawrence is an Arsenal fan and uh, Guardian and Observer uh, writer for a number of years and friend of the podcast. It's our only friend. The only guest that we've ever had. It's the only friend we've got. Well, we've got a lot of enemies. This is our friend. Thanks to you. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah, whatever. Sorry for having an opinion. Someone's got to. Um, Amy's, uh, of course, uh, fantastic book, Invincible, uh, which is available still in uh, for Christmas, not too late. Make sure you get your copy. And uh, if you are a season ticket holder, you got one for nothing. Did, did you do well out of that? I hope so. It was all right. Good, because <laughs> I've got two now. Uh, Amy, welcome. Uh, what I thought we might do, since you're here, is have a little look back at the calendar year, because... Arsenal are the uh, calendar year champions again uh, for the second time in three years. Uh, we were in 2013, best team in the Premier League over the calendar year, and we are once again. Can we convert that into a title? It, isn't it a sort of fourth place trophy style title? I know you're. I, I know you're absolutely. Yeah. You're like me. You're quite frightened of this. What's, what's yeah, looming now? Aren't you? I, well, that's the trouble. You know, it's, <laughs> I, you said you woke up this morning and. Um, were justifiably uh, tearing your hair out because nobody was talking about the match last <laughs> night. Um, but, I mean, at whatever time it was that I couldn't sleep last night, having a little flick through Twitter and seeing all these pieces and comments coming up, people saying, it's Arsenal's to throw away now and this is the year, this has got to be the year. And all of a sudden that kind of feeling yeah. emerges where you think, actually, it's much nicer to skirt under the radar but even when we had the great sides you know, I mean I'll go back to the 91 when we lost one game all season it still felt like it was in the balance in April it's still I remember Lee Dixon had a penalty in a home game when we were absolutely cacking ourselves because until you're there you're not there and you know, we're talking about a few games to go you can be six seven points clear but you could drop the last two games and lose it and our penultimate game in case you haven't noticed is Manchester City away so it'd be nice to be seven points clear at that point <laughs> <laughs> I think what's what's interesting is when you look at the history of Arsene Wenger's Arsenal going right back to the first double and then um, the, the, the following year in 99 when Arsenal were amazingly close to winning the league again and lost by a point 
Then again in, in 2002 and 2004, the recurring theme in all of these was basically more or less not losing a game from New Year onwards. Yeah. All those seasons, you look down the statistics. Good point, Keith. You... See, this is what this is what we, this is what we bring her in for. <laughs> I, I, I think I brought her in. She'd have been sitting there all night. <laughs> I think it was the, the um, vanish that brought me in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but um, basically yeah, that form. The, the, that form and and what has what was a, a, a thing that happened in all of those seasons with all of those teams and when you talk to the players involved they tell you that this is how it felt is they get on this almost blinkered sense of momentum where what's going on around becomes irrelevant they go into games expecting to win every game um it obviously it has been quite a long time since Arsenal have had that kind of vibe going on there have been a couple of good second halves of seasons to retrieve about fourth place the, about the two normally. halves together isn't exactly. it exactly but the other thing that's a good point I like that point I'll give you another one the one, the other recurring thing from our best sides is away form is key. And then 2002 and 04, and I think I'm right in saying we're the only team to have done this, we were unbeaten away from home in both those seasons. And our away form this season, if you look at our defeats, West Ham was peculiar. I feel like we were complacent against them. Chet made an unusual error. Maybe, he, maybe even he was nervous on his debut. And, and we lost the game 2-0 and that was odd. Then there was the Chelsea game and we played 10 against 11 and it should have been 11 against 10. And had, had the referee got it right, we probably wouldn't have lost 2-0. And then there's the West Brom game where we had scored an own goal and missed a penalty because he slipped over. There were, there were weird games where things went wrong, where you didn't feel... The, but and when normal services resumed, we get a result this season. But that's exactly what's interesting about Arsenal right now today, looking at what's coming up. Because you look at the games, <clears throat> you know, on paper over the over the next sort of you know month or what have you, and it, you can make a case for Arsenal playing well or being good should be collecting a lot of three points. But Southampton, Bournemouth, Newcastle, I'm it, twitchy as hell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree myself. with you, and I think that the game that's really, really one to take to take care of is Bournemouth. Yeah, because you can take your eye off the ball. Because I think that, you you know, just played away at Southampton on on Boxing Day in the evening. Um, If we win at Southampton, we'll be all right. But uh, what if we drop points? I know, but if 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 that's a good result... Leicester are going to win 5-0 at Anfield. No, I I think think if Arsenal (laughs) win at Southampton, there's going to be, whether anybody likes it or not, a slight air of complacency out of Bournemouth at home Mm. on the back of a good run. And just the tiniest percentage... Of complacency in that game, I think would be. Do you know what? They're a good side, Bournemouth. Exactly. But do you know their big mistake? They play football, and any team that plays football against Arsenal gets stuffed. They'll do well. They'll look good for ten minutes. They'll lose four-one. And that what they need to do is get everyone behind the ball and do a pulis. But I like their manager a lot. Big future in the game, but we cannot concede any points to them. But going to Southampton and winning is going to be hard. We haven't done well there in recent years. No, it's been a bad ground. But they're not. They're having doing a struggle at the moment. The, yeah. Go yeah, on. they got stuffed by Tottenham, didn't they? Always embarrassing. They got stuffed by Tottenham. They lost two nil. No, they got stuffed by Liverpool. Sorry, and then six, they got by six, they, didn't they? By six, and then they lost to Tottenham two nil at the weekend yeah. or something. And and um, Koeman said that Koeman's, uh There's a few think pieces around whatever that means about um, whether they're going to be the one that tends to drop like a stone in the new year because there's always there always tends to be one. <clears throat> so all those boys, Mane, okay. Tadic, Pella, not none of them firing. But it just takes one of those, so, you know, Koscielny gets sent off instead of Costa moments or Santi Cazorla slips when yeah. hitting a penalty moment. And you know, can it be doesn't one take, nil down. Yeah, the one nil down away much. from home in the Premier League is hard. It doesn't matter where you are. But I think this current squad, although obviously really stretched resources-wise at the minute, there is a great yeah, we've got solidarity there. We've got 14 there. players, Amy, and Debussy. <laughs> That's where we're at. Have we still got Debussy? He's still there, yeah. He's warming well, up. It's not, it, Jan- it's not January what? the 1st yet, is you it? Know the, you know what happens with the subs? The first three warm up, the top three, the main three subs, the ones who are going to get on. So last night it was <laughs> it was Chamberlain, Gibbs, and Chambers, and then for about five minutes, the other three subs are allowed to go and get get warm, get stretched, and that's Jeff Ren Adelaide, who I already he's already my favourite player, just just on the basis of his half time kickabouts, and it won't be. He might, I don't know if he's going to be a Quincy or if he's going to be the man. Who knows? You know, I see Benny Kifobe banging in goals for Wolves and I see people doing well down the leagues and, and Maitland-Niles Conservatives doing very well at Ipswich. If Iwobi's going to be one of them or if he's going to be with Arsenal, I don't know. But anyway, and then the third one, Debussy. Debussy's down there warming up with Red Adelaide and Iwobi thinking, I'm not going to play any Euros. It's over for me. I just need one of these Nigerians to convert 
like you know Iwobi, Chooks, and you know they're always Penicophobi. <laughs> they're always just they're just warming up, and it's just breaking me and Kanu's heart. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a hometown boy. <laughs> we have not had a proper Nigerian for a while. We have not had a, a Nigerian that we deserve. <laughs> maybe we should have. Maybe we should go and get Igalo from uh, from Watford. In, um, I'm in sorry, Tate, but we, we we went we went for a while. We went big on Africans, and uh, now we're going big on oh. Span- we're going big on Spaniards. And I'm sorry, I'm sticking blame- with Spaniards. <laughs> <laughs> no offence. I blame. <laughs> <laughs> I blame if, I, if I'd have said that, you can imagine how it would have kicked off, can't you? If old Muggins here would have come out with that statement. Keep still with us. <laughs> anyway, you'll see all those players when we play Sunderland in the Cup. <laughs> yes, that's also yes, true. Maybe that'll be Jeffrey and Adelaide's debut. We were talking about that. Um, the FA Cup, we were talking about the fact that we'll probably play the reserves against Sunderland. And uh, Sanchez now, they're saying, has, has felt a twinge and they're oh, well done playing them at Norwich. And he won't play any of these games against Southampton, Bournemouth and Newcastle. And he won't play the FA Cup either. Cause that, but the other thing is, as Keith pointed out yesterday, Sam Allardyce will play the reserves as well. So what sort of teams are you going to have in that fixture? I think Arsene will, Arsene will send out the eleven to just get over the line in the classic Arsene Wenger FA Cup third round scenario. Yeah, but you're... Um... You're disruling all these new signings that are going to come in on January first. Oh, do you know what? I, mean, I, don't, I don't think there will be any. <laughs> have you heard any? Uh, have you got any inside I'm track? Not sure how much my inside track's welcome in this room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh well, on. since you mentioned it, <laughs> uh, we got a text. We had uh, the Tuesday Christmas dinner yesterday before the game, and we get a text message from Amy saying it's Chambers of Flamini sent to mid, and uh, honestly, you ruined our meal. <laughs> What's that about? Where's Ram? Ram- Ramsey playing, you but said, that was well, only Ramsey was because what you say before about Ramsey in the middle was really interesting because when that when that fantastic piece of information came over yesterday afternoon, and you know the theory was Ramsey has to go back out to the right to accommodate the Chambers Chambers Flamini axis in the field, <laughs> and I thought oh this might not go quite quite oh, according well, to plan, but obviously it was a relief at that. But was it got I say it got made worse because you passed that on to it's probably Chinese whispers. So Amy to Al. You passed on to Damien the news. Damien then turns to me panic-stricken and says that Chambers and Flamini are playing centre-off. <laughs> <laughs> so as is, as is my want, I take immediately to... <laughs> immediately I must to say, uh, in defence of Chambers, um, well, no, I need to defend him, actually, but uh, while, we're, while we're talking about him, he, he, he managed to win a free kick off Yaya Toure in about the 89th minute by just getting in front of him and standing strong and not moving, and Toure got a bit frustrated and, and kind of pulled at him, and uh, and the ref, uh, Andre Mariner! And the love uh, boat. He swished uh, over in his I, white blazer. I will buy him a blazer based on that performance. <laughs> I thought he was a very good referee last night, and when he blew for that free kick, I thought, bang on, you got another one, right? I think that was the third and biggest would, cheer of and the night. And then Damien said, if Callum Chambers does nothing else all season, <laughs> yeah. and we win the league by a point. We can all point to that moment when he's when he stop man he stop the IR two right about twenty yards from goal. Don't want to get negative, but um, Amy, what did you think of you know the rear guard kind of action when Ozil came off? Um, how did you think? Uh, let's say Kieran Gibbs did yesterday when he came on. Why was he so nervous? That's he was nervous, and and and, he, and I think Arsene is because of the uh, injury situation lately. The things he's been experimenting on partly has been Callum Chambers in defensive midfield, um, Kieran Gibbs playing this kind of uh, advanced defensive midfield wide role. And it has worked on occasions. In fact, when he came in against Tottenham, obviously, mm. that was particularly effective. Um, and and against the Olympiacos too. Was good. Exactly. And so I think on the basis of those, Arsene felt confident in this situation, feeling that he obviously wanted to make some you know, some changes and... and Make things a bit more secure, but but Kieran, I think it was a difficult game to come into in in, in Gibbs's defence. Well, the it was other a thing high is, intensity no match. one else can come on, right? It was interesting that he picks Gibbs before the Ox is the first change, but there's that there's only then three to come on, so he's got to put them somewhere. We are absolutely bare bones. I mean, mm. if he's got Jack Wilshere or Danny Welbeck or all the normal sus- suspects, he'll play one of those. But that is why, exactly why I think these next few games are a bit trickier than everybody thinks, just because there's so many matches coming in a short space of time, and there are, as you say, basically 14 players. There is not yeah. a lot of room for manoeuvre. Three, three one nils. Flamini at, at the end of the game yesterday was, you know, 
he really couldn't do much more than just point. Um, you know, yeah. he, he, was, he was absolutely yeah. wicked. He was basically and saying, pointing I'll get there myself, <laughs> but I can't make it. I'll give you shares. I'll give you shares in the company. But get there and do it for me. <laughs> You're the second nearest, please. Just, just do, you think, do you think that is why... Um, why Yaya like showed up as much in the last 15 minutes? Oh yeah, minutes they because they our sent them in were dead. Feet. Yeah, yeah. Our sent them in to put in more than theirs. Had. And I, I did think. I mean, you know, we, it, it has tended that Arsenal's got away with it when he tries this thing of taking off the creative players, and you're just so aware. Campbell that it was, can Campbell was but, knackered though. Well, I think. Well, that, the thing about Campbell and Theo, apart from the fact they they worked so hard and were quite disciplined, mm. that was really pleasing. Is I'm really intrigued by this thing of them both playing on the wrong side. Which is quite new. It's quite a new thing for Arsenal. He hasn't really done anything like that for well, ages. He seems to have shifted Walcott to accommodate Campbell in a way, but they swapped well, centre half, didn't they? To start with, obviously, Joel Campbell, when he first came in, was mainly playing on the left. He's immensely left footed. Mm. And, uh, you know, there, uh, there was one game, I can't remember which game it was, where he switched him onto the right and he was cutting in, and all of a sudden that was really effective. That was Olympiacos, so, wasn't it? He, but he yeah, can so, see so the then, play, can't he? He can see the play, he can make Theo, assists. For Theo to be playing on his wrong side, he's never played on the left no. before. He's always played he's on rubbish, the right yeah. for years. <laughs> As I pointed out last night, about, <laughs> about nine seconds before he scored. But I think something's <laughs> clicked for Arsene where he's looked at that and he likes this. Hmm. Oh, I thought that Kieran Gibbs was nervous. I think they warm up for a long time. It's a massive game. He made. He got caught a couple of times, giving the ball away. When you first done the first two minutes. On top of that, suddenly they brought on Navas and they got De Bruyne, and then the right hand side is very, very yeah. dangerous. You know, Navas is incredibly quick, and Mo- and Monreal and, and uh, Gibbs had quite they a lot to handle. They didn't know who to pass and, on to each and other. And they're looking at centre mid, and centre mid is standing on the edge of the D, just mm. standing on the edge of the D. We were so deep, we were gone, and they got one goal. They got one. Well, we've got. We no, were all right because we had two. We, we should have had three or four, by yeah. the way. Well, Campbell on his strong foot. Um, Campbell should have. Looking back on that, Campbell should have done a little bit better with that. You've already mentioned when Ram- he came in from the right on a one-on-one with Hart. Yeah, and, and then Hart they went over the bar foot. down the end. Down the end, that uh, Chris and Amy were the, 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 the. Is that the North Bank? Yeah, he slammed it over the bar. Got too much on it almost. Yeah. My um, heart show what a great keeper he is because they nearly got a point out of a game. I mean, the Pellegrini, I thought afterwards, going, "Well, we had more shots, we had more of the ball." You were done, mate. Mm. You really, you didn't look like your team I, were up for it as much as the home team were. Until they got We've, the goal, I didn't feel that it was uh, the game was in danger. I thought we'd controlled it well, and even before we scored, I, I thought we was in control of the game. And there were the slightly time. less panic stations than, than than what we've got used to over the years. We did really well in injury time. It's always nice. We're just saying to him before we started. It's always nice to be the team that runs it down with a couple of uh, you know a couple of corners and a couple of uh, throw-ins and stuff. And once we got to injury time, it wasn't. It wasn't. The, um, Yaya had that one chance, which kind of which rolled oh, past. There was a couple of moments. Mm. <laughs> there was a couple of moments where we might have let one in. But Actually, I just it. remembered we another one. On. You know, you got to dig in. Everyone was there, weren't they? Mertzaker's in his element. He likes to be at the front post, getting in the way of crosses. He knows where it's going. He's been fantastic for us. And Koscielny's been. Mad. Don't you think Player of the Year, yeah. Koscielny? I mean, no, Sanchez has been stunning, but Koscielny, in terms of where he was when he arrived. Remember that Ricket at Wembley against Birmingham? It's unthinkable that he would do that now, you know? It's unthinkable. But isn't that one of the reasons why you're talking about the team as, as you are at the moment and what they can possibly go on to do? That when you say who's player of the year, you can state quite a lot of cases, actually, yeah. in completely different ways. I mean, Coquelin, who obviously isn't around at the moment, but yeah. has been immense during Monreal. this season. Yeah, you can. You can make a case for Gazzola. Ozil. Ozil. Would Sanchez. you let... Would you, you, could you, two... you could make a case for Giroud, Ramsey. Would you, would you let Debussy go? No, general? we need everyone. There's no... We can't let anyone go. We do, need do everyone. You, do, do you think... He, okay, put it this way. Do you think he'll let him go, Amy? I don't... I think he... I think his human side would be willing to let him go, but he knows he has to be ruthless. Who's going to play right back if, also, if he goes and Hector Bellerin gets injured? Debussy's not getting in a French team before the Euros. He's just not... I mean, those, it's gone for him. But we can't let anyone go. We need every. We need. We need bring people in if anything. I don't know who. I mean, I'm not really inclined to do a, a Kim Carlstrom or get get a couple of bodies in on loan. I mean, if we, I, what I'm thinking is, if there's if there's somebody who we nearly got in the summer or somebody we really want, then go the extra money now to so make a difference. Or to stick. make the difference, What's rather the than wait to the summer and think, well, if I wait to the summer, I'll save eight million. Don't. If you really well, think there's somebody who's going to make a difference, do it now because we do have the but money. But also, do but it I don't on know January who he the wants. first. 
Hmm? Don't do it on January the 31st. <clears throat> I don't know who he if, wants, though. I mean, what does he want? Does he want I think he, I think he wants a midfield player. It'd be nice to have a centre mid, wouldn't it? Because mm. really, with the best one in the world, Flamini is a lot of games coming. He was stretching himself last night in the middle of the game. He was doing all kinds of stretches to try and stay. There's some tightness that. in his but calf. He had, a late, he had a late fitness Arteta, test, didn't he? Really, can we, Arteta's been injured so much. We're not going to be able to give him a run of games to get up to form. And the, you feel the one thing we do need in the centre of midfield is, is some youth and energy. Particularly if you're going to let Ramsey basically have that freedom yeah. to go and make runs into the box. The player who's playing next to him has to have that could discipline, has defender. to have the legs. Got to be a good defender. Yeah, well, that with something, well, yeah, I, I, it's boring when I keep going about Condoglia. When I get when I get a hots for a player, <laughs> but we're obviously not <laughs> we're not going to get anyone from Inter Milan. But maybe there's this kid. Do you, have you known anything about the PSG boy Rabiot? Rabiot. Rabiot. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think uh, Robot been... will be calling him. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> if he's, uh, I mean, he's been making noises about about wanting to leave Paris Saint Germain to get some more football. Which is not he's a good sign when you're twenty, talented. though, is it? I mean, there's a bit, has he got a bit of an attitude problem? <sighs> Well, Lauren Bloch thinks so. Uh, he was not too impressed with um, with him coming out making noises about wanting to go. Is he like a trapped type? Uh, I don't think he's <laughs> quite on that level, but um, he's a very, very good player. He's he, he's sort of Edu like. He's tall and elegant, quite tough, good playing on the ball. Um, sounds ideal. Yeah. Young French. I don't know what's not to like yeah, really for Arsenal. Sounds, like, sounds like he's amazing. How's Condogbia's season going? Have you been keeping an eye? I haven't really been keeping an eye. You've, taken, you, you've yeah. taken the poster off the wall. I did uh, for a while. I was keeping an eye, and I don't know where Inter are at the moment. But yeah, whatever he's gone, that, that one's gone. But yeah, Rab- Rabio, maybe there's a chance that maybe they let him go for half a season, and then with a view to a p- permanent signing at the end of the year, one of those sorts of deals. Who's the one that we were all? But Lauren Blanc, if Arsene Wenger phones up, is he going to go? Yeah, all right. Or is he going to think? Oh, I'm not going to let him go then. Well, I think it's a bit of a similar situation to... I mean, obviously, league-wise, Paris Saint-Germain are probably not expecting to have too many difficulties no, they're keeping walk their it. place at, yeah. at the top of the league. So it's not it. the same as saying we can't let anyone go. It's not a Debussy situation. But they don't want to let him go because they rate him highly. And he's and, from their youth team. Yeah. Who's the one who's at Wolfsburg now who we, we'd all signed in our heads a couple of seasons ago? Oh, Draxler. Draxler, that's mm. it. Julian Draxler. I mean, he's not really defensive-minded. He's not. He's not what we need. We need someone in the middle. There's there. a young Wayne Yama, they want about 90 million quid for Wayne Yama, don't they now? There's a young kid in uh, Portugal called Neves who um, is pretty highly rated, and I think they. Too much, too young, eh? Carvalho? Is he injured? I, the thing about Carvalho is the sort of whole third party ownership situation. Oh, is there really? Uh, and a sort of. Uh, oh. I just think it's a sort of. Situation. Look at that inside oh. track. Oh. Did you feel the inside track opening before you? Yeah. Did you see the photo of Maradona in his Arsenal leisure wear training kit the other day? Oh, no, I did see that, yeah. 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 Well, it's like not that. looking at his best, is he? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I love it. Well, I must does. say is that they will provide leisure wear in all sizes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late to order. <laughs> Brad, Brad, Bradley got a nice, um, uh, a nice Arsenal hat in the Secret Santi yesterday. He did all right. Yeah, Secret Santa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Shilpa seemed quite pleased with her, um, with her, uh, Alan Davis urban urban trauma CD. DVD. DVD. Yeah. yeah. yeah she got it. Yeah. Quite well. You signed it. Some smart ass put one of my old DVDs in. And what I said is, you got to spend a tenner, not forty pence. <laughs> yeah. It was a it was a pound and. <laughs> Oh, you lashed out then, didn't you? <laughs> and, and have like, you watched it, T? I've seen it before, yeah. I've seen it. I've seen good, it. good, seen isn't it? seen it a while ago. Yeah, I think you'll right. agree that a pound is an absolute bargain. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thanks. Now, Don't now. Need to, oh, no need to hesitate. Uh, uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put, I'm gonna put your <laughs> fabric CD in next year. You wait. Wait, that's a pound as well. Yeah, yeah. No, pound. Well. You'll, you'll be lucky. <laughs> uh, uh, he's referring to Fabric Live 32, by the way, if anyone's yeah. a... Shit. Yes. <laughs> That's going to get ugly in a minute now. Well, <laughs> oh, he threw wine on me. <laughs> well, you've got to have closure on that, Al. Yeah, it was a long well, time ago. Oh, yeah, you're right. Now, my trousers have just dried. <laughs> so, Amy, can we go through um, favourite moments from the year? I mean, it's a weird calendar year. We don't do the calendar year. It's all wrong, isn't it? But here we are. It's the end of the year. Not, it's not even the end of the year. We've still got two games left yeah. in the year. It's Christmas, but... Favourite goals or players or moments or anyone you anything that comes to mind? I think the Alexis Sanchez Cup final goal. Oh, oh well, was... what a shout! Boom, mm. isn't, it? isn't it? I said to Keith, I think he might have a go here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> you dare 
detonated that. He finished Shay Given, basically, didn't he? Shay Given might as well have left the ground. Do you think we killed Villa? Uh, during that, you know, Villa not just died. The, Villa, Villa died. died. That died, that didn't died. It? it just—it's been pear-shaped from from yeah. since yeah. then, hasn't it? The whole thing. Clear. <laughs> 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 that corpse is going to take some rousing. Is Remy Gard the man? We will find out. But yeah, oh, yes, good shout. T. Any? Uh... Uh, uh, come back to me. Oh, All right, Amy. Any more? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Keith can't remember anything. No, I like. And I can re- stuff in Manchester United at home. Can... Oh, yes. That yeah, Sanchez mean, goal. That was a good thrashing. You know, it? when he hits those shots where you feel like the net's only just held it, <laughs> like the net was only just about strong enough to keep that one. That was a Man United one. The net was at full stretch. Was that his, um, was that his back heel for the first cut? No, the shot. We skipped over some crap hole of a defender. Was that, was that Liverpool 3-0 in this calendar year? The last home the, game. The Liverpool four one was. Mm. Uh, was it four one or four nil last four, springish four where Hector four Bellerin one, scored or Ozil yeah. scored? Ozil got a free kick. Because that's up that there. Was a, that was a, mm. that was I'm not, not great asking you that one, yeah. Alan. <laughs> I'm not asking you what you feel about that, that was one. Lovely. But that, uh, that no, no death threats that day. That was <laughs> <laughs> unusually. <laughs> that was like that was until maybe yesterday. That was one of the times where it was. It felt like. Good loads of Good fun, loads of fun to go to the Arsenal again. You know, we hadn't really had, we haven't had too many of those. It wasn't that angsty. They were rubbish. We played really well. It was loads of fun to be at the game again. You know can what I mean? Pull out, I can I pull that Mesut Özil's assist for Kieran Gibbs equaliser against Spurs? Mm. I, I mean, he just that, no one else could have done that. Again, Without him, mm. we lose that game one 0 He pulled out the pass of the century there. I don't know how he did it. He drifted it so that Gibbs couldn't miss. Amazing, and also I don't even know if it's calendar year or not. I don't think it is, but I'm just I saw a replay of Aaron Ramsey's volley against Galatasaray the other day, and I feel like if we don't go any kind of best goal that you can remember session without mentioning that, did we have two in that game? Didn't like Podolski Podol- try and break the post? Podolski well. basically got a move to Turkey in that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that uh, uh, speaking of. Um, Champions League is that when uh, by taking Joel Campbell on loan, Olympiacos have kind of reignited Joel Campbell. I think that because he really went for it that day, and he's been and he's looked a different player since yeah. then. He was he would, and his like his look away pass, love a look away pass. Yeah, as you know. um, that was <laughs> what you do too. We yeah. we all like a look away. Like Ozil look doesn't do look away passes, does he? No need. He sold so many dummies by the time he passes it. He almost, if he did a look at it, you wouldn't notice. Uh, <laughs> are we including beating Bayern Munich? Oh, oh. Maybe. yes, yes. Yeah, well, it, was, it was good. That <laughs> <laughs> just means he can't remember it. All right, I've got one. I've got one. I've got one. Flamini on the volley at White Hart Lane. Ah. <laughs> The resurgence <laughs> of Matteo Flamini in that game. Talk about someone who takes their opportunity. Mm. Talk about a, a message to the younger players. I mean, really, he was out of it as a first-team player. There was no way he was going to get a start. He was behind Coquelin by miles, and he was behind Arteta as well. And now suddenly he's in the thick of it, and it was based basically on that game. And then he, he started the next game. Was it Leicester away the next game? I can't remember. But he started it and got injured. And had to come off, and, go, oh, and now we'll never see him again. But he's in the heart of the side. He's in the heart of the side at Olympiacos. He's in the heart of the side against Man City. I'll tell you that away win at uh, Leicester. Now he's looking pretty damn good. Isn't yeah. yeah, that was a good day to have Sanchez yeah. in the side, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So. It's a great day to have Cazorla in the side because Cazorla, uh, Cazorla to San- I think it was Cazorla to Sanchez. Another one of those kind of. There was a fair bit of Urzel in that game as well. Let the ball run across. I love a pass where it runs across. A little bit of Urzel in your life. You have a look at that. There's one where he ma- he, he, he basically make, makes about fourteen passes in the same move and then ends up setting someone up. I quite enjoyed. Um, uh, Arsene celebrating in what well, we beat someone good recently and Arsene <laughs> Arsene jumped up on the touchline. Do you know the one well, I mean? I think, yeah, yeah, that, I think you might be thinking about Sunderland. So when you say someone good, I mean someone <laughs> in the it, league. Is it just Sunderland. <laughs> Oh, he's it's, really up for it. But, he, oh, th- but it's for that, that reason because he's really up for it this You'll season. You'll like this. I did a gig at, um, in with Mark Mayo, who's a Keith and I've known for many years, a very fine comedian. He runs a comedy club in Muswell Hill. One of his regulars is David Dean, once of this parish, and uh, and I've met David Dean before because, as you know, I've got a lift. I've got a lift home. Well, not home. Back to my car out of White Hart Lane in 2004, and I swear to God, I thought I was going to die. And he gave me a lift in his Range Rover with all his relatives. 
And he said to me, I dine out on that story. I said, you dine out on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I dine out on that story. <laughs> he saved my life. And that, that, the following week, he sent me a framed uh, copy of the league table, which I've still got. He's a class act, David Dean. And it is a shame he's not in the board anymore. But there it is. He's an Arsenal fan now. And now uh, we were talking about the team and Man City were approaching and were we going to win and all the rest of it. And I asked him how Arsenal's doing because Arsenal seems pretty pumped and pretty up for it. And I referred to that Sunderland game when he was jumping about and it seems like he wants it more than ever. And he said that the Arsene says the team spirit's better than it's ever been. It's better than it has been since the back in the day, back in the day of the Invincible side. And we know when Amy came in before and talked about the Invincible squad and all of that celebration of the 10th anniversary, the, the team spirit between them, when, when they got together to celebrate, it seemed about as strong as it was at the time. There was a, there was a real love in the room between them all. And, uh, yeah, apparently that we have that. So we've got that on our side, as well as some superstars and a good back four. I'm all for it. I think it's on. Oh. <laughs> He's done it now, hasn't he? Come on, no, 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 no. Come I on, it's so on. It well, how can it's you on. not say it's on? It's definitely Look at you, I said it's on, and you all went, no. <laughs> it's not like going Ole in the eighth minute, <laughs> like I was doing against Man U. <laughs> We started, we started laying just before half time just to watch Damien's head so explode. Go. Because, man, you, I was laying after about nine minutes. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> it is, I can't, I mean, it is, it is making uh, the same kind of anxiety that we've all kind of got. I'm just sitting there, I've, I've written it out so many times. I mean, I don't think Leicester are going to stay. I don't think any of us do. And that's not to undermine them. It's just the weight of logic means that it's they long, should so kind of come. We can run them down. There are so, points so we should be able to run. Now, look, we'll we, we should be we should be able to beat Leicester at home, basically, right? So then you have got Man City who are, who've got um, Aguero on one leg and no company. What's your gut and there's saying? No what's your gut saying? My gut says that we. Should, <laughs> my gut says that we Amy's win the terrified. league. Amy, what's the matter? My, my gut is saying. Four points is the difference between Arsenal and Man City. Oh no, we're not going to blow it on this penultimate Four game, are we? Four points is nothing at this. Uh, when it's not even it's Christmas yet. Of reason. I'm afraid to be really boring about this, but everybody's got to chill for a bit. Calm the yeah. f down <laughs> yeah. until after the next three games. But what if we win them? No. I mean, I just <laughs> <laughs> play the reserves at the new Camp. It's Man City. Second- Jeffrey Adelaide. It's, it's Man- marking Messi at the it's corner. It's Man City away. <laughs> Man City away, second last game of the season. The last game of the Coronation. season, my friends, Coronation. is Aston Villa at home. Aston Villa right? will already be relegated. It's Aston Villa playing at with home. a newfound freedom under their fourth manager of the season. <laughs> 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 it's funny how we were so yeah. relaxed on the day, yeah. the occasion didn't get to us. Yeah, we've never won five nil here before. <laughs> uh, do you want to win the FA Cup? Uh, I'd I'd like to I'd like to have a I'd like to have a Presence. run at it. But actually, this time last year, I went to um, a friend's... Amy Lawrence is here. Don't forget to uh, pick her brains because you know she's not just here to clean the carpets. <laughs> she brings with her a wealth of knowledge. I think we've heard. Uh, I think I think we've, <laughs> we've heard, heard enough of what you're going to no, say. I think, then. No, I was going to say. I think the uh, I think the way that the uh, the tone of this podcast has been raised with our special guest is uh, something. Yeah. Which should only be able to happen at Christmas. Otherwise, we get spoiled. I'll tell you one other thing about Amy Lawrence. I'm going to eat her mince pie. And that's not a euphemism. I'm actually, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to eat a mince pie. <laughs> Keith, stay out of it. No, no, there's see, no, it does not need that. a secondary comment. Yes, do. It's the Russell <laughs> tinfoil. I was going to say, uh, this time last year, I went around a, fr- uh, a friend's house and their daughter was learning she wore a yellow ribbon on the piano. And that, my friend, was a sign. I haven't seen that again this year, but I'll let you know how I get on. But, um, uh, it was a sign. 21 games to go. Is that a song? It sounds like one. Oh, it's just twenty-one seconds to go out. But I see, yeah, that's. <laughs> can we? Can we? Uh, can we do a version? Come on, you got contacts. We'll do a little Christmas version and uh, we'll put it on. Uh, Amy, we'll are, are we going to win at Southampton? How's Cooman doing? Have how's, you seen him in the flesh lately? Oh, no, it's, it's delicious, and you're a fool not to eat it. <laughs> um, are we going to win against Southampton? I think at least. We've got to be aiming to win. Um, that, the game, win the game at Southampton last January was the sort of Chesney smoking Chesney. Mm. incident, which mm. was a terrible match. And uh, I just think that there's a different vibe about Arsenal's team and and a different vibe about Southampton's team, which hopefully will tilt things slightly. But last season, that was an important game because it was it was a sort of a rock bottom moment to an extent for the team. 
and I think for Wenger. And things really shifted after that point. That was when, not long after that, that Coquelin came in, Bellerin came in, uh, Ospina came in. And they, 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 they cha- he changed the balance of the team. He basically redrew things to have a slightly different he back He can four. do that, can't he? He can, suddenly, he can react to a situation like that and pull a result out of the bag when I mean, quite a lot of people want him to be fired, basically. Obviously, he didn't, he didn't necessarily want to suddenly pull in Coquelin, who was on loan at yeah, Charlton or Charlton. whatever it was, or, or bring in Ospina particularly at that point and have a slightly more even... Uh, tempered goal but also I mean it was only point. about two or three weeks after we'd been humiliated at Stoke wasn't it? I mean we had a couple of for a while there it was wobbly but he's, this can, as I say this calendar year he's turned it around I can't see that, that Southampton result repeating this I can't see them beating us 2 nil. I think we're going to beat them beat Bournemouth Beat Newcastle, beat Sunderland in the cup. The last four, I mean, 89 accepted. We'll have a cigar on by March. You'll remember the numbers better because you don't want to bear this. But the last four, the last four titles, we don't really go down since 89. We haven't, we don't really go down to the wire, do we? Just going from what you said before, we kind of tend to get ahead and sort of win it with. Win it comfortably. Mate, it well, it was that. It, it was never that feels final like stretch. it. Mate. Yeah. It never no. feels well, like the, it. Well, the the Invincibles one was four games to go. Um, really? There were, yes, in in two in ninety eight, I think two games. Ninety eight was two games to go. There was we a couple of games. Ever, to we go. lost to Everton and Villa afterwards, didn't we? Um, what, what, one of the titles went up to Liverpool. No, got beat four 0 straight we, away. We beat Everton at home to win it, and then we lost to Liverpool. I think no, it was Villa and Everton. No, no, sorry, no, it was Villa, right, and it was Everton, Villa and Liverpool. Sorry, yeah. right. Um, and then I know we in had, 2002 we had the cup final to come didn't mm. we Lee Dixon told me that someone shouted out from the crowd are you still pissed <laughs> and he shouted out yes ah. but then they pulled it round for the, for the cup final in 2002 or 3 sorry we, we won the league at Old United, Trafford uh, United we how many Old games to go gonna happen? we're going to win the league we're going to win the league at the Etihad and it's going to be a nice little set there we won the league at Tottenham twice i say again we won the league at Tottenham <laughs> Twice in our lifetime, and we won the league at Anfield. Lovely day, lovely. <laughs> day. The league at Old Trafford, marvellous. I was actually there for that one, and I was there for one of the Tottenham ones, by the way. But this, this is going to be great winning the league at Man City with all the billionaires up there and the directors' box. As a grown-up, do you reckon? Um, what do you reckon the top four is going to be? I'm not even going to say their name on here, but what do you reckon the top four is going to be? Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal Man Arsenal. City. Leicester. I think Leicester will stick it out mm. in the top four, Crystal and I Palace. think there's one place up for Crystal grabs. Palace. Oh, come on, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Come on, Palace. <laughs> Who knows? Fourth no, place is up for grabs, but it'd be Man U, wouldn't it? Oh, I hate to say it, but it could be top. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lawrence. Oh, All right. Oh, <laughs> 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 Your time's done. <laughs>